All right, welcome back, students. It is Mr. Clemen, and we are still in personal finance and the credit unit, and we're now moving on to uh, our next topic, which is major purchase and taking a look at purchasing a vehicle. You're going to have a lot of different things pop up when you're looking at purchasing a vehicle. Um, so we're going to cover a handful. We're going to take a look at what the installment loan looks like, what an amortization schedule looks like, and then talk about how we use our debt snowball uh, in this example. As you go look, and we, we talked about this in careers a little bit, when you go look at the sticker price of a college, right? And uh, going to St. Cloud State says it's, you know, $24,000 a year. Does that mean you're borrowing $24,000 a year to pay to go to St. Cloud State? Probably not. We talked about how you'd fill out your FAFSA form, you'd get an expected family contribution, you maybe would get grants or scholarships, uh, you may run into some work study, and eventually you would have a loan uh, that you would take out. But the sticker price of going to that school isn't necessarily what you would borrow to pay for it. Same but different idea here when we talk about a vehicle. Just because the sticker price on the, the truck that you find at Cocado Motors is $50,000, that doesn't mean that's the amount of money you borrow to actually uh, purchase the vehicle. So let's take a look at some of the things that go into purchasing a vehicle. So we do start with that sticker price, whatever that happens to be, and it's one of the very few purchases we make that you have the ability to negotiate on the price, right? And, and we'll make the joke that, you know, if I walk into the marketplace and a gallon of milk is $3, I don't go to the cashier and say, well, would you take $2.50 for it, right? The person working at the marketplace would probably look at me a little funny, right? But it's not unheard of to go to a car dealer, take a look at the sticker price, and it's 50,000 bucks for a truck. And you say, well, would you be willing to take something less than that? Now, they may say no, but this is one of the very few assets that you purchase where you do have the ability to negotiate. So that is one way that the amount that you got to pay for the vehicle is less than the sticker price. Second is a trade-in, right? Maybe you've got an old vehicle that you no longer want to use, need to use, and you're going to go ahead and give the dealership your old vehicle, and they're going to pay you a certain amount of money for it. Now, they may go look at a, a Kelly Blue Book or some other rating service to see the value of your car. And that would be based on the year, the make, the model, the number of miles, what kind of condition it's in. Um, you know, cars are not meant to run indefinitely. Now, if taken care of well, they can run a long time. Um, but there is a, a standardized kind of price, if you will, when you want to trade it in. And the next piece, and probably the biggest piece, is your down payment. Um, when you go to a bank to borrow money to buy a car, and let's say it's that sticker price of $50,000, they're not going to give me a $50,000 loan to purchase that vehicle. They will give me maybe upwards of 80 to 85% of the value. So on that $50,000 vehicle, they may give me only a $40,000 loan. Well, there's a gap. There's a $10,000 gap there that I either have to negotiate the price down, I have to be willing to trade in an old vehicle, or I need to come up with a down payment because the bank or GMAC financing or whoever may not borrow me dollar for dollar the total amount that that car is worth. One of the things that at times can get people frustrated is, you know, we, we look at the sticker price, we negotiate, we trade in, we come up with a down payment, and then there are some additional pieces that pop up. Sales tax, uh, registration, title fees, and dealership fees. These are all added in at the end once you've figured out the price you're willing to pay for the vehicle. So I go negotiate the price down. I trade in a vehicle for a couple thousand. I come in with a four or $5,000 down payment. That's not the end number, right? And, and that's just something people have to understand going into the deal that that isn't the end number because you have things like sales tax, registration, dealership fees that will, will change that number, right? 
once you've gotten to that number, whatever that number happens to be, we get into what's called an installment loan. And we talked about that in Credit Basics, that this is a one-time chunk of money being borrowed to the customer. And that loan will be paid back in a systematic set schedule of payments over a specific period of time. Most car loans are anywhere from three to eight years. And sometimes they're termed, I'm gonna get a 36 month loan. Well, that's really a three year car loan or a 48 month loan or a 60 or a 72 or now some of the newer vehicles are upwards of 84 months. Really that's seven years. Right? So when you borrow that money, you are agreeing to ahead of time how many payments are you going to make on this vehicle? Now, a lot of them will allow you to play, pay that bill off early. But when you get your original schedule and your list of payments and how much you're going to pay, uh, it's going to be based on either a three, four, five, maybe six or seven year car loan. Now, the dealership will give you paperwork on all of this and they'll say here here's the price of your vehicle and your trade in and and your down payment and tax title license and fees and all right here you go here's your number you're borrowing you know thirty seven thousand four hundred dollars or whatever math we're going to make up but you could also go into this negotiation or this this purchase with an idea of what you want right an idea of what you can afford and an idea of what it's going to cost you rather than just kind of going in blind and saying, oh, well, I guess I'll just let them tell me what I can afford. Um, my suggestion would be to negotiate the price of your vehicle first, then decide how much can you afford on a monthly basis. Don't go in and say, well, I can afford $350 a month in payments. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Right? They're, they're gonna stretch the loan out as long as possible to help you afford that vehicle. Well, I would start with negotiating the price first rather than saying, well, I can afford X, Y, Z. Well, you've come up with a plan, you come up with a cost, then work and say, well, now that fits into my budget. Well, I'll take a four-year loan or a five-year loan or whatever that happens to be. We're gonna transition here in a second to an Excel spreadsheet and we'll take a look at how do we make this all work. So as I pull my spreadsheet up again, Mr. Clem likes to label the heck out of everything. I start out with my title of my spreadsheet and I'm gonna call it uh, Major Purchase Vehicle. And for me, I like to label all the things that go into, into my, my numbers here, right? So I got sticker price of my car. Let's just stick with that $50,000 uh, vehicle. And then we talk about negotiations. We talk about trade-in and we talk about down payment. We've got your amount financed. We've got tax, which is at 6.5%. We go back and take a look and see, we're talking registration and title fees of $25. And again, these are ballpark numbers, right? Very ballpark numbers here. And dealership fee of four hundred dollars. And as always, we're going to write some simple Excel formulas to make this math work. Let's say I negotiate two thousand dollars off of the price of the vehicle. And maybe the trade-in for my old vehicle is $5,000, and I also have $5,000 in or down payment. I chose to go negative on these numbers, so in theory, I can take my $50,000 sticker price in my vehicle, 
add the negative number because I negotiated the price down two hundred or two thousand dollars. Add the negative five thousand dollars in trade in and add the down payment. Right. Now, if I don't like that look, I can change these all to positive numbers and subtract. But either way, I'm talking about financing about $38,000. Well, my tax is 6.5%. So I've got about $2,500 in tax on this transaction. I got a title fee of 25 bucks and a dealership fee. So $38,000 in the amount I was going to finance plus tax plus title and license fees. I'm going to borrow almost $41,000, right? So now I got to figure out what's that going to cost me, right? On a monthly basis. Well, the first thing I'm going to want to find out is what is my interest rate? What is my cost of borrowing? We're just going to make up a number and call it 5%. Right? That's my annual interest rate, my cost of borrowing for my vehicle. As times change, this number will go up or go down, but we're just going to use 5% as some arbitrary number. Well, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look at my payment function. Just like all of my other functions, every single function is going to start with an equal sign. An equal sign says to Excel, a formula is coming. What kind of formula am I dealing with? Well, I've got a PMT or my payment function. Inside my payment function, I have five bits of information. I have the rate. I have the N per, the present value, the future value, and the type. So let's take a look at rate. Rate is going to be my annual interest rate and dividing it by 12 because I'm going to make monthly payments on my car bill. My N per is going to be my total number of payments. So if this is a three-year car loan, it would be 36 monthly payments. My present value is going to be the amount of my loan. And my future value and my type are both going to be zero. Future value saying I'm not leaving anything at the end. I'm going to pay the whole bill off. So annual interest divided by 12, comma, to move from rate to N per, total number of payments, comma, present value, that's going to be the amount I'm borrowing, and then zero, zero. So we come back in here, and again, I want to label things. So 36 months, I'll go this route, I'll go three-year loan. Well, really, that's 36 months equals PMT. Now I can be efficient and start clicking on cells and say, okay, take whatever the value of that cell is. That's 5% divided by 12 because I'm making monthly payments. Take an annual interest rate and turn it into a monthly number. Well, how many payments am I doing? Well, I'm doing 36. How much am I borrowing? Well, I'm borrowing this exact amount of money here, $40,895. Comma zero, comma zero. If I wanted to borrow and repay this $40,000, almost $41,000 in three years, I would make 36 equal payments of $1,225.66. That's a really big car payment. But again, I'm paying it off pretty quickly. Now I'm going to do a four-year loan which again is going to be 48 months. I like to label things nice, clean, and simple. Again, take my annual interest rate divided by 12. I'm now making 48 monthly payments and I'm borrowing that much money. Now here's a shortcut. I can just close my formula off after I've got my present value number because my next two numbers are zero and it'll let me do that. This is one of the few functions that let us do that. Now it makes sense that that number is smaller because I'm spreading it out over another year. Since this is a new car, I can drag these payments out 
over a longer period of time. If this was a used car, they may limit me to only a three, four, or five year car loan. They may not give me the option to have a seven or eight year car loan on a used car. Again, PMT is my function. Annual cost of borrowing divided by 12. How many payments? How much am I borrowing? Now Excel's trying to help me out. I don't need it to help me out because it's gonna move down and make a mess of my numbers. I gotta tell it the exact place to go here. Notice each time my amount of money gets smaller and smaller. My monthly payment gets smaller and smaller. You would assume that because each time I'm doing this, I'm stretching it out an additional year. Here are my options, right? I found a $50,000 vehicle. I found a way to negotiate trade in and down payment. I'm financing 38,000 bucks. They charged me 6.5% tax on that transaction, some title license and dealer fees. I'm borrowing just short of 41,000. My cost of borrowing is 5%. Here is my five different payment options, right? Which of these can I afford? Well, I come back and go, I don't know that I can afford any of those numbers. Well, then I have a few options. Negotiate the price more, see if I can get a bigger trade in for my vehicle, or I got to come up with a bigger number here in my down payment. Maybe I'm going to come up with $10,000. Now, because all of these formulas down here were based on this amount borrowed, and this amount borrowed is based on other formulas here. As soon as I change that $10,000 down payment, I got a new number here. All of my numbers here are changed, right? Because they're all based on cell B9 in this example. Now, if you typed in the numbers, which again, there's, there's nothing wrong with typing in the numbers, right? Rather than typing in that value, I could type in you know, 40,895. I still get the same answer, but when I do that, when I start making some adjustments, I may have to retype in some of these numbers and it makes it a little bit more difficult. We're gonna go ahead and end the video here. When we come back, we're gonna take a look at something called an amortization schedule. And that is gonna be the list of all my payments.